Mostly sunny, windy, and warm today, high in the 80s. There was no justice in America today, and I'm glad they showed it to the world. A night of rage in Los Angeles after four police officers accused of beating a black motorist are acquitted of criminal charges. Good morning, America. I'm Joan London. And I'm Charles Gibson. This morning in Washington, D.C., it is Thursday, April 30th, and we devote most of the broadcast this morning to the Rodney King case. Joan? California's governor has declared a state of emergency for Los Angeles to curb the violence that broke out after a nearly all-white jury acquitted four police officers charged in the videotaped beating of Rodney King. This morning, the Los Angeles councilwoman, whose district covers much of the area affected by the overnight violence, also a man who's pleased with the verdict, the defense attorney who represented Officer Lawrence Powell. Charlie? Also, we'll have reaction from a leading black civil rights activist, and we'll get the legal perspective on the Rodney King case from our own Arthur Miller. All that coming up, but let's get right to Mike Schneider, who's standing by with the news of the day. Mike? Thank you, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. We have been watching parts of Los Angeles burn overnight, stores being looted in Los Angeles, motorists actually being pulled from their cars, and in some cases, beaten. All a reaction to the verdicts in the Rodney King case. There are parts of Los Angeles right now, the trouble parts, the shaded area of your screen there, that are now under a dusk to dawn curfew as police, aided by the National Guard, which has been called out now, try to restore order to a very troubled section of America's second largest city. The trouble started shortly after a jury found four Los Angeles policemen not guilty of criminal charges in the beating of Rodney King. The verdict very much a surprise. The verdict coming despite the videotape, the now famous videotape, which showed police hitting King over and over again while he lay on the ground. And the angry reaction to that verdict has left five people dead now at the latest count and dozens injured. We get more on the story from ABC's Tom Foreman. A state of emergency was declared by authorities as more than 150 fires burned in Los Angeles and the looting and rioting continued through the night. In several cases, motorists were dragged from their cars and beaten. Some witnesses say the rioters cheered and raised their arms in victory as a truck driver was attacked and sent to the hospital in critical condition. More than a hundred other people were also injured in the violence. Several died as anger over the King verdict swept through the black community. It's just really sad. And again, I feel that all they're doing, because it came up that everybody was not guilty, all they're doing is covering us black kids and everybody that's minorities, is that our life isn't worth anything. Early on in the evening, community leaders fervently called for restraint, saying violence would not change the verdict. We don't want you to resort to violence that would only destroy every positive thing that we have been doing. But say you're angry, yes. Say you're tired of it and you won't take any more, yes. But by midnight, the governor was calling out the National Guard. This is a matter that needs to be settled in the courts and not in the streets. We slowly will get it under control, but I think there's a lot of uh, work to be done before it is under control. Like the Watts riots nearly 30 years ago, the trouble started on a few blocks and then quickly spread, fueled by passionate violence to cover miles. Now, numerous public schools have already been closed. Several roads in and out of the most troubled areas have been shut down. As police struggle to contain the violence without provoking more, they are hoping these measures will help calm the situation. A curfew has already been called for tomorrow night. And there are still a couple of hours left in this night on the West Coast, so the violence is not over yet, Mike. Tom, at this point, what are they doing about the fires? Are firefighters getting anywhere near these blazes, or are they in some cases just content to sit back and let themselves burn? They're having a little more luck now because the police have largely been involved in trying to protect the firefighters while they move in and try to do this work. One firefighter was shot in the face earlier tonight. Um, and he was taken to a hospital for treatment. Uh, they're doing a little bit better at that. More than that, the police seem to be doing a, a better job of trying to keep some of the blazes from being set now. So at least they're dealing with, with a number of blazes that do not seem to be growing as rapidly as they were at one point in the night. One also, from looking at the video, could get a sense sometime that everybody in these neighborhoods is rioting, and we know that's not the case. Are we getting feedback from some of the other residents, how they're coping with this and what their reaction is to the violence around them? There's not a lot of feedback at this point, Mike, because a lot of people are not coming outside and, and 
it's three o'clock in the morning and a lot of people don't want to be outside. It's uh, later than that now, it's four o'clock here at this hour. And a lot of people are simply staying away from the violence, trying to avoid it. There's not a lot of reaction from the street simply because of that. The people who are on the street are either trying to stop the violence or are part of it in great part. There has been some reaction already, though, from the Justice Department, apparently in response to pleas for some sort of federal probe. Uh, what do we know about that, Tom? There was a federal investigation early on in this case. The federal agents started looking into it, as is their custom. They wanted to let the local remedies run their course to some degree. That has now, the word is now that that will be resumed, and the officers would be investigated on civil rights violations, which will be different than uh, the case that was just uh, brought to, uh, to the courtroom in the past few days and, and resulted in the acquittals. That could produce a different result. Interestingly enough, the way that word gets out as daylight comes here over the next day, the way that word is spread to the community that there are other things that could be done could make a difference in how much violence may be around tomorrow night. Tom, as you were saying, the fires are still burning. We do have some video right now of exactly what is happening in Los Angeles. This gives you a pretty broad scope of the, uh, of the horizon, the skyline there. And you can get a sense there that indeed the city of Los Angeles, despite what you may sense at first from looking at these pictures, the city, of course, is not burning in mass. There are fires burning, but they do tend to be scattered around the, uh, around the perimeter and throughout parts of, of the area that is now under a curfew. Now, the jury in this case, and this is one of the key factors for the outrage here, the jury in this case, which cleared the police officers, had no blacks on it. There was one Asian, there was one Hispanic, but the rest of the people were just white people. There were no black people there. One juror did talk later with ABC's Ted Koppel, the condition here that the person would not be identified in any way. That juror said that King could have stopped the beating at any time by simply raising his hands. The juror said the jury believed the policemen were justified in fearing that King was an out-of-control person and potentially violent. ABC's Tom Schell now has more on the verdict. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant not guilty of the crime. The jury's decision was the same on 10 of the 11 charges against the four police officers. In each case, it was not guilty. As court adjourned, attorneys, defendants, and family members exchanged hugs of celebration. Outside the courtroom, Deputy District Attorney Terry White commented. Well, my reaction is uh, shock first and then disappointment. Obviously, we feel the uh, evidence warranted a conviction on uh, the defendants and uh, the jury disagreed with us and we must uh, abide by their decision. Uh, Attorney uh, Stephen Lerman, who represents Rodney King, was outraged at the verdict. Any right-thinking uh, normal person that, that sees that videotape and, and has experienced the, 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 the shock and, 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 and viciousness of this event uh, can't can't sit with this uh, this verdict as being the final say. The only count on which the jury could not decide was against Officer Lawrence Powell, and it charged him with excessive force under color of the law. Judge Stanley Weisberg declared a mistrial on that charge and set a hearing for May 15th, at which the prosecution must say whether Powell will be retried. Despite the unsettled charge, Powell was pleased. Your reaction to what has happened today? Very happy. <laughs> but outside the courthouse, the reception for Sergeant Stacy Coon, the man in charge at the beating incident, was unfriendly. Tom Shell, ABC News, Los Angeles. As you might expect, a number of officials around the country, people in and out of politics, and for that matter, in and out of the presidential race, are now reacting to what happened yesterday in Los Angeles and what's been happening overnight and into the early morning hours. President Bush said last night, and I'm quoting now, that the court system has worked. What is needed now is calm and respect for the law. That is a quote from the President of the United States. The Democratic presidential candidate Bill Clinton said that he was shocked and concerned by the King verdict. And he said that in a time of pain and injustice, all Americans have to come together or the country will come apart. That from Bill Clinton. The other Democratic presidential candidate still in this race, Jerry Brown, also reacted to the King verdict yesterday. He was campaigning in Nebraska. Mr. Brown said that black Americans are being beaten down by the economic system and that it's no surprise that violence is the reaction. Jerry Brown, of course, not only a presidential candidate, but the former governor of the state of California. We'll be having a good deal more on the situation in Los Angeles, more reaction from a variety of officials and people involved 
in the situation out there as Los Angeles tries to cope with the civil disturbances that are continuing as we speak. But that's it for now. Time to check in on the day's weather, and Spencer Christian is standing by with that. Spencer? All right, Mike, the last couple of days we've been talking about the western heat wave. Well, the heat wave has shifted a bit towards the nation's midsection today, so we'll take a look at the hot and the not so hot. The Denver being the hot with an expected high temperature today of, of 95 degrees, way above normal for this time of the year for Denver. Boise, which is now in the cooling area where a cold front has come through and brought in some clouds and showers, will see a high of only 66 degrees. That, of course, is the not so hot. Let's go to the highs, expected highs for the rest of the nation today. We can see that highs will reach record levels here in the nation's midsection, all the way up into the northern plains and the northern portion of the eastern Rockies, or the eastern portion of the northern Rockies, I should say. Highs will reach well into the 90s. That is quite warm. But the nation's two northern corners will see much cooler weather up in the northwest where the cold front has uh, swept in and pushed the heat towards the nation's midsection. Highs will only be in the 50s and 60s. There'll be uh, showers scattered all around the northwestern corner of the nation. Sunny down through the nation's midsection and into the southwest. Partly cloudy to partly sunny in the southeast. Up in the northeast, there'll be a mixed bag of a little bit of sun peeking through from time to time. Lots of clouds and showers hanging around. Possibly a thunderstorm or two, an isolated storm as the day goes on. That's a look at the national weather picture. Here's a look at the weather where you are. Good morning, everybody. I'm Channel 5 meteorologist Rick Mitchell. Chances are you will be tempted to turn on that air conditioner today. Almost a repeat performance of yesterday. In fact, it might be a little bit warmer. Plenty of sunshine out there. Late day thunderstorms well to our west. Not around here. It will be a dry day. And temperatures in the 70s and, yes, 80s. Your forecast for today, mostly sunny, windy and warm, a high of 88. And we'll have more on the national weather coming up in the next half hour. Joan? Right now, it is almost 12 minutes after 7. We get reaction now to the violent aftermath that followed the controversial acquittal of four police officers in the beating of motorist Rodney King in Los Angeles. Joining us from Los Angeles is Los Angeles City Council Member Rita Walters. And her district covers much of the downtown and south central Los Angeles, which is primarily a Latino and Africa, African American community. Uh, Councilwoman Walters, good morning. Good morning. Can you give us an update right now what's happening there in the streets, much of it in your district? Uh, the fires are still burning. Uh, they're spreading uh, westward into other parts of Los Angeles. Uh, and in some parts of the city, there are still people in the streets uh, wreaking destruction. I'm told that you were at a community meeting last night, I believe, in a church in, in your district. Can you tell us what was said there and the reaction of the people? Yes, uh, the Reverend Cecil Murray at the First AME Church here in Los Angeles uh, sponsored a very large uh, community meeting in an effort to give people an opportunity to vent their frustration, to give uh, a forum for their anger, and also a platform for people to plan for the future. The attitude uh, there was one of deep-seated anger, uh, but for the most part, I believe, one of determination to go forward in a positive way from this point. I believe you also met with Mayor Tom Bradley at City Hall. Uh, we saw pictures of what was going on outside City Hall. What was going on inside at that meeting? Well, trying to uh, get as complete a picture as possible on what was uh, occurring around the city, uh, on what was occurring uh, right beneath our windows there in City Hall. We are hearing now that uh, the National Guard troops are being mobilized, but what do you think it's going to take now to get people to redirect their rage and their anger? What can the city do now? Well, you know, every time an untoward event occurs, we ask ourselves this question. But the answers, it seems to me, are much more far-reaching and much more deep-seated. When we look at the status of the African-American community more than 25 years since 1965 when the Watts riot occurred, we find that very little has changed. Indeed, it may have gotten worse. Uh, there's an absence of hope. There's an absence of jobs. There's an absence of any real uh, feeling that there's a future for African Americans who are not affluent, who are not well educated. And uh, even with education, uh, there's still a struggle for uh, one's place in the sun, as it were, here in Los Angeles.
Mm. Councilwoman Walters, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. 14 minutes after, we'll have more reaction to the verdict when Good Morning America continues. At Mars, you'll find the outdoor living ideas you're looking for. Relax in style with Plantation Casual Furniture. You can create your own unique set. This five-piece barrel chair set is just $174. And make patios, porches, and decks more inviting with a Crestline wood-swinging patio door. On sale now for only $349. Enjoy outdoor living and save at Menard. Many factors determine how you are perceived during a job interview. The way you dress, for instance, indicates how you will present yourself in the corporate world. At Mr. B, we specialize in corporate apparel for both men and women. And because we are specialists, our competent staff can recommend affordable corporate apparel for the interview process with quality suits starting at just $295. Approach every interview with confidence, knowing that you've trusted your corporate image to the professionals at Mr. B. Heirloom Gardens offers a large selection of quality perennial plants, herbs, and ornamental grasses. We have a wide range of varieties for dry sunny borders to cool shady nooks, rock gardens, woodlands, or naturalized areas. Perennial plants return each year to grace your garden with colorful bloom and attractive foliage. Enjoy a spring drive in the country and let our staff at Heirloom Gardens help you with your perennial garden needs. We're located on Highway 90, an extension of Grand Avenue, one and one-half miles west of Boonville. Hi, my name's Mike Spurl. I used to have cancer. A few years ago, I was on TV for Iowa Methodist Medical Center. They smiled when things went well. They shared tears with us when things didn't go well. This time, I'd like to say thanks to the people at Iowa Methodist and to remind everybody that I'm still here, better than ever. And so is the Cancer Center at Iowa Methodist. The new John Stoddard Cancer Center at Iowa Methodist. We're in this fight together. Seventeen past the hour now. Yesterday's acquittals of those four Los Angeles police officers were, to say the least, as controversial as the videotape that brought the case to light. Only one of the officers, Lawrence Powell, was not completely exonerated. He can still be retried on one of the counts against him, the count that charged use of excessive force. Joining us now from Los Angeles is Officer Powell's attorney, Michael Stone. Mr. Stone, can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Good morning. Good to have you with us. I appreciate your being here. Few of us obviously have seen ev any of the evidence but that videotape. But that was very compelling evidence, and I think that's the reason that so many people were surprised, indeed even dumbfounded, by the verdict. Tell me what the jury inside the courtroom knew that people outside the courtroom didn't. Well, for, for one thing, the videotape that most um, of the people have seen is not the complete videotape. It was, it was cut and uh, shown to, uh, uh, on local news programs, and only the uh, so-called violence of the police officers was shown. The, the acts by Mr. King that precipitated that were not shown. And then, of course, there is uh, roughly three minutes uh, after the initial traffic stop before the video started when uh, Mr. King was uh, um, uh, failing to uh, comply with any of the orders and actually uh, came up at one point and assaulted Officer Powell. Uh, all of this evidence was presented to the jury, and it's beyond um, uh, the knowledge of, of most of the, uh, of the people who have expressed opinions about the case. And, and when you went into this, what was the critical thing that you felt you had to do that obviously got done because, uh, because you got the not guilty verdicts? Well, sir, we knew we had to put the jury in the shoes of the police officers at the scene. In the shoes of Officer Tim Wind, in the shoes of Lawrence Powell, in the shoes of Stacy Kuhn, and in the uh, shoes of Ted Brissino. We had to make the jury see this incident, see these circumstances through the eyes of the police officers who were there at the scene, rather than through the eye of the video camera from 175 feet away. I was interested, uh, Ted Koppel uh, on Nightline had a chance before the program last night to talk by telephone to one of the jurors. And that juror said to him that King could have cleared up many things if he had testified. Um, do you think that's the case? Yes. I believe that uh, there was a, uh, a gap in the evidence that only Mr. King could fill. 
And during the uh, closing arguments, the prosecutors challenged the defense, saying that uh, if, if Mr. King had anything to say that would help the defense, we would have called Mr. King. Well, I think it, that cuts both ways. I think if the, Mr. King had anything to say that would have helped the prosecution, they would have called him. There were a number of questions that I put to the jury in argument that could only be answered by Mr. King, uh, the most important of which was why didn't he comply? Why didn't he stop? These are questions that only Mr. King could answer. Just, just a final question, Mr. Stone. You, you've said that, that race played no part in this case. Do you think a jury of 12 African Americans in Los Angeles would have come to the same verdict that, uh, that, uh, that the 12 people in the Simi Valley came to? I can only speculate about that, sir. I would be concerned about a jury of, of um, any citizens in the city of Los Angeles in these times deciding this case, uh, regardless of, of their race. Michael Stone, I appreciate your being with us. It's been a long day for you, I know, and I appreciate your being with us this morning. The Thank first you. reaction that many people had after hearing the verdict was, how did it happen? And we wanted to get some legal reaction from our legal editor, Arthur Miller, who's joining us from WCVB-TV in Boston. Arthur, the mayor of Los Angeles last night said the system has failed us. Did it? I think that a jury of 12 people, having heard all the evidence, and here I agree with Mr. Stone, that there was more evidence other than the videotape put out on the networks, might have come to the conclusion that these officers were using reasonable force in the circumstances. The defense did an excellent job of portraying Mr. King as a hulking, huge man who had behaved bizarrely, erratically, uh, showing the tape in stop action to show that there were ambiguous movements by King on the ground that he never really submitted. So if you give the defendant, as our system gives our, our defendants, uh, every reasonable doubt, uh, it, is, it is plausible that the jury could have come in the way they did. I, I personally, having watched a good deal of the trial, thought at least two of the officers would be acquitted. Frankly, I didn't think all four would be acquitted. Well, but the, the, the mayor also said the jury told the world what we saw with our own eyes wasn't a crime. Does this define what, in any way what police can do? Does this, what effect does this have on police officers? I think there may be a bad message here that uh, police can go to the limit. Uh, they, they can use uh, what most normal people would say is excessive forces. I think the battleground in terms of police or police brutality now switches back to the command function, the training function for law enforcement officers. Because keep in mind, Charlie, this is not over. There will be a civil rights investigation. There will be an internal affairs investigation. There may be a civil lawsuit. I think police chiefs around the country, despite this verdict, now have to keep their troops in line. And that can only come through education, training, control. Very good point, Arthur. Okay, I appreciate your being with us. Thank you. Coming up on 23 Minutes After the Hour, talking more about the Rodney King case through the morning. We'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, the Baker Square Baker. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, you're introducing 19 new dishes. In special portions for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, yes, yes. Can you confirm the prices? From $239 to $599. Yes. Have you ever introduced...